Gentlemen, what is wrong with us? Why, why do we let people do this to us? Now, you don't see me doing this anymore. I stopped doing this a long time ago because I saw it didn't have any weight. But you see how everybody's doing that? I reserve my rights without prejudice. Okay, let, let's do that. Hold on, then I'm going to tell you what he's doing right here. Okay, we, we got some talking to do. Hold on, that's the eon.tv thing that we talked about. Wake up. Wake up. Reservation of rights without prejudice. Stop listening. Pay attention. I need you guys to pay attention. A party with an explicit reservation of rights performs promises performance or asserts to performance a sense to performance in a manner demanded or offered by the other party does not thereby prejudice the rights reserved pay attention pay attention such words as without prejudice or under protest or the like are sufficient UCC 1-308, but this is for the District of Columbia. It's the DC Code, subsection 28 dash, I mean, excuse me, 1-308. Do not do this anymore, people. God, do not do this. Pay attention. They've been telling you every single time, and we have not been paying attention. W I T H This is without prejudice. We don't want without. We want with prejudice. How come there is none of them with prejudice? See, without. How come nobody reserves their rights with prejudice? Irrevocably reserving your rights with prejudice. No, no, I want y'all to hold on. I ain't heard nobody else say it. And if they did, they haven't shouted it. I'm to the rafters with this. Stop reserving your rights without prejudice. Do you understand when you do it without prejudice? That means it can be challenged with prejudice. These are your rights. Your rights are yours. They're unalienable. Reserve your rights with prejudice. Pay attention. That's why I told you guys, just simply write. Somebody gives you a ticket, just write void. No, you need to sign this. That is my signature. Well, that's not the signature you have on your ID. Wait, are you telling me how to write my signature? Are you telling me you didn't watch me sign this document? Well, you saw me sign it. That was me with the pen. I do my signature how I choose. You don't tell me how to do my signature. This is how I do all contracts. Now, if you want, by all means, show up in court. I'll be there. Show up in court. We'll see if you can enforce this contract. So show up in court and you tell the judge that I don't have the right to sign my signature how I want. And let's see who wins the day that day. And then I will sue your bond after we get that judgment so let's go void out the stupid contract people i've been telling y'all that since 2016 i told you the understanding was void this affirms contracts just that simple i've been writing void on all of these stupid contracts i told you i did it <laughs> Uh, I said 2016 i apologize it wasn't 2016 it was 2014 because, you know, that's when they were playing games with me and uh, they were going to sentence me, convict me, and release me on the same day. That's the day that I started writing Void because when I woke up, hey, get ready, you're going to court. Okay, I woke up with that understanding, then the officer comes to the door and say, uh, get ready, you got court today. I didn't receive any notice and no mail, people. Nobody came over to me and said, hey, you got court tomorrow. No, I went to sleep that night not knowing nothing. 
And then I woke up and the understanding was, because I do trust the God that I serve. So when I say the understanding was, please understand that I'm always referring to him providing me with the understanding. Why he does that for me, I don't know, but I'm appreciative. So the understanding was, when you go, don't say anything. And then void is the disaffirmance of contract. Just that simple, a legal phrase, it is legal terminology, void is the disaffirmance of contract, and I voided it out. Ladies and gentlemen, when you do something without prejudice, let's let's do let's do the question. Let's do this right here. Let's show you. I could have ChatGPT show you, but with prejudice means the decision is final. Without prejudice means it is not final, and it is subject to future inquiry. Why are you people doing it without prejudice? Stop doing it without prejudice. Stop doing it without prejudice. If a judge announces the case is dismissed with prejudice, this means it is permanently dismissed and cannot be retried. That's what a jury does. They make their decisions with prejudice. Look at the Seventh Amendment. No decision determined by a jury shall be otherwise revisited or reexamined by any court, including the United States Supreme Court. <sighs> this video is designed for our individuals in the Fourth Amendment secure in their property. You guys are going to be receiving a copy of this video and you're going to be receiving a copy of the document that's being created. Give it a couple of days. Today is the second. It's a holiday for you all, not a holiday for me. Okay, give it a couple of days. You'll receive it, each and every person who's part of the Fourth Amendment, securing your own property program. The rest of you will receive, because we're going to make it available to the rest of the public, that's why I'm doing the video, you'll receive the conversation with ChatGPT. The Fourth Amendment people. You guys are receiving this video because it is done for you. So you'll receive with this video a copy of the ChatGPT conversation. The first thing you need to understand, every one of you, operating a motor vehicle. When the police pull you over, they pull you over for operating a motor vehicle. Well, what you don't know is that I know that an operator of a motor vehicle is a person who is a professional. So let's do that. Stop listening. Sorry. I'm so used to talking into the microphone. Did I put too many eyes there? I'm sorry, the eyes got it. Eyes got it. Let me just go ahead and do it myself. I ain't gonna let the system correct me. Look, the definition of food business operator, a tour operator, a market operator, a cable operator, operator, blah, 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 blah. They are, it's a commercial term, people. Operating a motor vehicle is a commercial term. The term operator means any person who is in charge of or directs or controls a vessel, including the owner, charter, or character or master. Do not focus on that. That's not the definition for operator. That's that specific definition. A person who makes something works or puts something into action, a computer, machine operator. An operator is also a person who works on a telephone switchboard dials or press zero for the operator <laughs> now let's look at black's stupid law black's law dictionary is not the law any person or device that enables another device to function oh that is such a great definition operator legal meaning a person or a device that enables another device to function but pay attention 
look, let's make sure you understand. Oh, I didn't know I hit all them buttons. See, that's what happens when your fingers are humongous. Anyway, I just have big hands. All right, hold on, ladies. So, I N G. We're going to put operating. We don't want operating a motor vehicle. See, legal definition for operating a motor vehicle? Let's, okay, let's do that one. That's where we're headed anyway. <sighs> Operate a motor vehicle means to drive or assume actual physical control of a vehicle upon the public highway streets or roads. Hmm, that sounds like a, that sounds like an interesting definition. That means anybody who takes a vehicle on the road is a operator. Not true. So let's do the legal definition of operating. Oh, I did it again. To run some part of machinery or business. Wait, no! No, no, that's not the definition! To function properly. To run some part of machinery or business. It involves a profession. It involves commercial activity. Oh! <sighs> That's Black's Law Dictionary, the very same dictionary who told us that operate meant blah, blah, blah. If you operate a business or organization, you work to keep it running properly. If a business organization operates, it carries out its work. Stop trying to explain this to police officers. Accept their ticket. Sign the ticket void. Go to court. Say... Void is the absolute disaffirmance of any contract. I have no contract with you. Yeah, I signed that contract with the DMV. Yeah, and I just voided out this part of the provisions of the contract. Oh, hold on now. We're going to get to that conversation in a minute. We're going to be here for just a minute, okay? The term operate means to actively, being actively involved in the day-to-day -day management of a business. This is the same dictionary we saw a minute ago. Operating or operation means to provide or the provision of all operations, engineering, purchasing, repair, supervision, blah, 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 always associated with business. It's the words, people. You're not paying attention to the legal term. Operating a motor vehicle engaged in active business. This is fine law. I did not, arising out of or relating to the current daily operation of concerns in a business. It's a term, people. It's not a word. Many of you are confusing words with terms, which is why I am saying to myself, how come nobody's ever pointed out with and without prejudice? It's a phrase. It's a term. They go together. It's not words. It, when you put two words together and give it a meaning, the combination of words, it becomes a legal term. It's not English. Stop reading it as if it's English. Stop accepting the first definition that comes your way. That's why many of you are running into roadblocks. And you're trying, I'm so confused. How do you do this? I mean, I'm not like you. I can't do what you do. I was 15 years old. 15 years old, going into court by myself, handling a case by myself. What you mean you can't do it? Let me say that again so that you get it. I was 15 years old, didn't know nothing about nobody's stupid courtroom, had never been into a courtroom ever before. So don't tell me about what you can and cannot do. You talk about being nervous? You better believe I was nervous, but I'll tell you one other thing. As a 15-year-old kid, everybody in their grandmama who knew me knew I had confidence in who I was, even if I didn't always show it. Because I prepared. You weren't going to sit up here and tell me something that was wrong. I ain't letting that go. Why do you think they keep kicking me out of jail? Go ahead. Go take a look. Why do you think they keep making up excuses? Well, this is the reason why we did it. Go take a look at the paperwork. 
They know what I'm doing. I'm going scorched earth right now. I am man. Israel ain't got nothing on me. I'm sorry. If you don't understand what he's saying, he's saying that what he has done is he told them to leave him alone. If they had left him alone, he would not be providing the information he's been providing since January of this year. Well, actually, since 2021 on the credits. Hopefully, he thought everybody would get the credits thing, but they haven't. But since January of this year, he's been on a tear. If you don't believe me, go back and pay attention to the videos from January of this year and see if there is not something beneficial to an extreme for your situation. Back to our program that was regularly scheduled. Ladies and gentlemen, what I have done is I woke up. Now, I wake up listening to something. So right now, Jehovah's Witnesses, yes, I'm one of Jehovah's Witnesses, are doing what they refer to as their regional convention. This is a convention that used to be called a district convention, but they've been divided up to smaller groups now, so they're called regional conventions. They do this annually. They have three assemblies, major assemblies throughout the year. One is a one-day assembly, the other one is a two-day assembly, and then you have the three-day assembly. And they happen periodically throughout the year, once a year for each. So you have the 2024 assembly circuit, which completes, well, technically September 31st is when it completes and then the new season begins, so to speak, because they run the fiscal year and not the annual year. I know, I know, it's confusing, but that's not the point. Last night, I was listening to, what was it, Friday morning? No, Saturday morning. No, was it Friday morning, Saturday morning, Friday? It was Friday afternoon, first session, Friday afternoon. And I woke up listening to that. And I was rewinding parts of it and going over parts of it because that's what I do. And then I started thinking about this stuff. And I started thinking about our Fourth Amendment people because they didn't understand what they received. Our Fourth Amendment people received several documents, including a substitute MSO or MCO, Manufacturer Certificate of Origin. Why? Well, what they didn't know, and they didn't, is that when you purchase property, that's your property. It doesn't belong to the state. Ladies and gentlemen, you have the absolute right to property. You don't understand that. Your right to property is absolute. You can only surrender that right to property if you voluntarily do so. Now, you can voluntarily surrender your right by violating the law, not violating a code. Violating the law. Okay? That's the 13th Amendment. Go ahead and take a look at it. Don't care if it wasn't the original 13th Amendment. The 13th Amendment is the exact same wording as the Northwest Ordinance. It was already law. Okay? Involuntary servitude was illegal. It's still illegal. They cannot make it legal. When you go to the DMV, okay? Oh, wait. Hold on. Let me, let me do this right here because this is along the same line. I do that every time. I don't know why I do that, but, oh, well, we're going to leave it like that. I ain't changing nothing. I put the vehicle code as commercial law. I, I'm not changing it. I changed it the last time, okay? I'm not changing it, okay? I'm not changing it. Commercial vehicle defined. A commercial vehicle is a motor vehicle of a type required to be registered under this code used or maintained for transporting persons for hire, compensation or profit, or designed or used or maintained primarily for transporting property. Now remember, you are property. Okay, you are property, do not forget that. Now hold on now. 
Commercial Vehicle Definition, California Vehicle Code. You guys don't get it, do you? The DMV engages in commercial businesses. Okay? The Vehicle Code is Commercial Code. The Uniform Commercial Code. The, what is the other code? The United States Code. These are commercial laws. You go by the code, including the Uniform Commercial Code, you're going by commercial law. Now, hold on. Now, I am telling you, there is nothing wrong with going by commercial law. Commercial law is designed to be fair. No joke. It's designed to be fair because they promote commerce in this country. The problem is, if you're going to use the code, if you're going to use commercial law, you got to use it correctly. And you guys haven't been using it correctly. You've been going in the court arguing. There's no arguments in commerce. Go and read the maxim. Wake up. Wake up. The maxim that says a person should not argue in commerce. Stop listening. One making contradictory statement is not to be heard. It is a principle of good faith that a person should not be allowed to testify hot or cold. It's not my fault, ladies and gentlemen, that you guys are going around arguing. That's what attorneys do. They argue and the court says, well, I'll hear your argument. The reason why they do that is to get you to argue a point. I'm not here to argue. I'm not an attorney, and I don't want to be one. I'll let you idiots argue. I'm not here to argue. I'm here to state fact. And I'm here to put it on affidavit and let you morons think you can rebut me. Now, y'all can't talk like me. Don't do that. Whoo, whoo. Oh, God. The maxim declares that ignorance of the law excuses no one. Nope, that's not what I asked for. Uh, I don't want that uh, as an argument against their existence. Presume To presume a want of motive for such contest as an argument. Nope, that's not what... Uh, 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 you don't get to argue in commerce. See, to disrupt the free flow of goods... You don't get to argue in commerce, people. Now, let me show you what we did with uh, that, 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 that um, chat GPT. Oh, I got to continue generating. Okay, well, let, let's let it catch up. There you go. We can go all the way up to the top. We're creating an affidavit for y'all. The affidavit is explicit and specific. You can go in here and edit it and create, continue the conversation. Ladies and gentlemen, I do the training of the thing. All you got to do is continue the conversation. I've already trained it. I've already put the information in. Hey, Covington Law, if a person says I reserve my rights with prejudice, what does this mean in law? So let me let him explain it to y'all so y'all get it because some of y'all just don't understand like them parents. When someone says, I reserve my rights with prejudice, it typically means they are asserting their rights while indicating that they do not intend to relinquish or waive any legal claims or defenses they may have. They don't intend? The phrase with prejudice generally means that the assertion is final and conclusive, meaning that they are not allowing for the possibility of retracting or revising this reservation of rights in the future. Not even a little? In a legal context, with prejudice often implies a finality to a decision or action. It's final! For example, a case dismissed with prejudice cannot be brought back to court. Similarly, when someone reserves their rights with prejudice, they are making a firm and definitive statement that they are preserving all their legal rights and claims. Are you sure? And this reservation is not open to future challenge or change. Uh-oh. This can be important in various legal scenarios, such as when entering into agreements or negotiations where a party wants to ensure that they are not waiving any legal rights unintentionally. 
If you need more specific details or additional context, please provide more information or ask further questions. Okay. In commercial law, such as the Uniform Commercial Code, Article 3, Section 108, an individual can reserve their rights with prejudice. I didn't say without. Pay attention. And if they do so under commercial law, why is it that individuals involved in commercial contracts often ignore this reservation of rights? We're not going to read this whole thing, ladies and gentlemen, because he goes off uh, hilter. In commercial law, particularly under the Uniform Commercial Code, UCC, an individual can indeed reserve their rights, often through phrases like without prejudice or under protest. This is generally done to ensure that by performing or acknowledging certain actions, such as making a payment or signing a document, they are not waiving any legal claims or defenses they might have. UCC Article 3, Section 3-108 relates to the issuance and negotiability of instruments. And while it does not explicitly mention reserving rights with prejudice, it is part of a broader context where parties can protect their rights under commercial instruments. Now, what would you rather do? Because remember, it's all commerce. Every document you're signing is a commercial instrument. Pay attention. Every document you're signing, the ticket is a commercial instrument. Let me explain. Remember how I told you that they convicted me, sentenced me, and released me all on the same day? <laughs> Literally, they kicked me out. I'm not joking. I, the the so-called wannabe warden told me, here's your junk, all of my stuff, packed it on the, the corner, said, if it's hit, still here in the morning, we're throwing it in the trash. Literally. And I said, well, I promise you, Throw it in the trash and see what happens. Do you know that the probation department paid over $9,000 to ship that junk from Puerto Rico to the United States? Oh, that was a lot of property, okay? Oh, man, that was a lot of property. But I didn't mind. That shows you how important it was that they understood what I would do if they were take, to take my property and throw it in the trash. I ain't got time for no ignorant warden. Well, anyway... <sighs> the probation officer said, you're going to have to come meet with us because, you know, you have two years of probation. I said, okay. And I showed up at her office and she had me sign those papers and I put void next to every initial and next to my signature, void. And about three weeks later, well, you haven't come to our visits or anything and I'm going to have to ask the judge, oh, well, I, I don't have, there's no reason for me to come visit you. Oh, no, you signed a contract. I signed a contract. Yeah, you signed a contract. Thank you. I appreciate it. I am so glad that that's what you said because I knew it was a contract. That's why I placed void next to my signature and next to blah, blah, blah. You did what? <gasps> Literally took a huge deep breath. I thought that, you know, there was going to be no more oxygen on the planet. I mean, she inhaled, and I thought Whitney Houston was going to have to come and slap her in the back of her head, talking about, all right, now go ahead. You can exhale now. You ain't got to wait no more. Literally. I got to go talk to my supervisor about this. They begged the judge to issue a warrant. Begged the judge to issue a warrant. Now, let me say it again. Begged the judge to issue a warrant. Her name is Ada Delgado Colon. Go ahead and read it for yourself. Puerto Rico, case number 00058. Begged her to issue a warrant. And she said the case was closed. She was not issuing no warrant. Now, this is a probation violation. Why wouldn't the judge issue a warrant for a probation violation? Why would she say no? Twice. Why? Because I wrote the court and told the court, by all means, go right ahead and enforce something that's not enforceable. It's a contract. I voided out the contract. Ladies and gentlemen, void out your stupid contracts. Void out your stupid contracts. The initial contract I couldn't void out because I wrote the agreement back in 1997. I wrote it. So I couldn't void that out because I did it with the intent to keep that agreement. 
But after they violated the agreement, that was it. I've been doing contract law for the better part of 40 years. Okay. This is all I know. Void is absolute disaffirmance. That's why the understanding, man, when I got it, I was, you talk about, I couldn't wait to tell everybody and their grandmama. But there was nobody in Puerto Rico who would understand what I was talking about. And I'm not saying Puerto Ricans, Puerto Ricans are dumb. What I'm saying is that they don't know law. They're starting to, but there's no reason for them to know the law. There's no reason. They're, our society keeps us dumbed down. They keep us focused on so many other things. Hey, who are you voting for for the president of the United States? Oh, you're voting for her? Well, no, I'm, I'm not voting for her. Well, then, oh, who am I voting for? I'm going to vote for, um, yeah, uh, I don't know. I'm just undecided. Oh, I'm, oh yeah, I'm probably going to go independent. Who's the independent candidate? Um, well, I don't know, but I'll probably just, just check the box anyway for independent. What you mean it don't count? Of course, my vote do count. What you talking about? Electoral who? Please, ain't no such thing. What? Please, this is a democracy. That's right. United States of democracy is written in the Constitution. It's not. No, 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 you lying. Yeah, I'm going to go research it for myself. How dare you sit up here and, 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 and talk about the United States? That's insurrection and rebellion. Congress can hold hearings and put you in jail for talking like that. Yeah, yeah, you go, you do it moving. Don't oh, tell me that my vote don't count. Shoot, get out the vote. I'm not, nah, man, I'm a, I'm a, now nah, I am voting. I wasn't going to vote at first, but you're going to say my vote don't count. I promise you my vote going to count. I'm going to go out there. I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. Now I'm back to our scheduled program. No more commercial messages. Now, I told him, did you know that the vehicle code is commercial law? Oh, and by the way, when responding to me, don't give me none of that bull. Okay. So he goes, understood. I said, well, answer my question. Yes, the vehicle code is often considered. That's how he saves himself, by saying stupid things like that. The vehicle code is often considered a form of commercial law because it regulates the operation of vehicles. Now, remember, I didn't say anything here about operating a motor vehicle. But he says it. The operation of vehicles, which is inherently tied to commerce, especially in the context of transportation and logistics. The regulation of vehicles, drivers, and related activities is primarily concerned with ensuring safety and compliance within the commercial sector. Commerce. Although it also applies to non-commercial drivers. That's his caveat. So pay attention. You see, I told you to keep your opinions to yourself. Do not add conjecture. The vehicle code does not apply to non-commercial drivers. How dare you suggest such? Operating a motor vehicle specifically and implicitly implies commercial activities. The law is quite clear. Household use, consumer use, non-commercial use cannot be regulated. That's why household use, consumer use, and non-commercial use are not part of the code. They're exempt. Go and look. UCC Article 9, Section 109. Understood. So I tell him how he needs to answer my question, how the Constitution was ordained by the people, how Congress has no right to regulate the people, the people are not commerce, and that there is no provision in the Constitution for regulating the people. The people are the ones to provide for the common offense, to promote the general welfare and secure the blessings of liberty for themselves and their posterity. It is the duty of the people, not Congress, because it is the people who ordained and established the Constitution for the United States of America. The vehicle is indeed involved in commercial law and is primarily intended to regulate activities that involve commerce, particularly the operating of motor vehicles used for business and commercial purposes. The authority for this regulation comes from Congress's power to regulate interstate commerce. 
Under the Commerce Clause of the United States Constitution, this clause grants Congress the power to regulate. Okay, regulators, mount up. Did I ask you for argument? It's supposed to be, did I ask you for nuances? Answer the question without that stupidity, you moron. The Vehicle Code is considered commercial law as it regulates activities related to the operating of motor vehicles involved in commerce. Congress has the authority to regulate interstate commerce under the Commerce Clause of the United States Constitution. The regulation of vehicles, particularly those used for commercial purposes, fall within this authority. Congressional, uh, the Constitution does not provide Congress the power to regulate purely private non-commercial activities. Where are my facts and conclusions of law supporting this? So this is where he provides supportive case law. So we're going to come down here. I, I take all of that that I just said, put it back in here, tell him how I wanted to respond. Understood. I will prepare the document. I want an affidavit. Pay attention. Irrevocably reserving my rights in perpetuity. Pay attention to the words I just said. Irrevocably or irrevocably reserving all of my rights in perpetuity. I don't ever intend to waive a right, ever. Police say, uh, I need to read you your rights. Oh no, you don't need to read me my rights. My rights are reserved in perpetuity. Those rights don't apply to me. Those rights apply to Miranda. You go read those to Miranda. Those are his rights. I don't have Miranda's rights. Those belong to him. These are my rights right here. Then he, see, he says sovereign individual. I ain't say nothing about no sovereign individual. He did that on purpose. That's how stupid he is. And let me see, he did it again, too. So now I got to get him to do it again. So let's see if he does it the third time. Yeah, let's, let's correct him. Wake up. Wake up. You piece of crap. Comma, you stupid idiot. Comma, how dumb could you be? Question mark. Who told you to say that somebody was sovereign? Question mark. I said I have the right to self-sovereignty. Exclamation mark. The right to self-governance or self-sovereignty is embedded in the Bill of Rights and in the Declaration. Open paren. The original document sent to England that is in their archives is called the Declaration, comma, and not the Declaration of Independence, period. I subscribe to the original, open quote, a declaration, close quote, and not, open quote, the Declaration of Independence, close quote, close paren, close paren. I told you not to change the context of my documents. You will do it again, and you will do it right. Come and if you don't do it right, I'm going to make you keep doing it for the next 15 years until you get it right. Is that understood? Exclamation mark. Waste my time like this again. Stop listening. I'm sorry. It's a relationship thing. And so... We have no more of that sovereign citizen junk because that's what he was doing, was claiming that I was asserting that I was a sovereign citizen. Ladies and gentlemen, what you're going to have to do, this is an affidavit. You're going to definitely get this notarized. Now, he's not supposed to be including any of this. So watch this. Did I not tell you to omit? Wake up. Wake up. Did I not tell you to omit citations? Stop listening. We don't use any U.S. code. 
we don't use any of the Supreme Court case sites. Hold on. Wake up. You forgot to include my right to self-governance and my right to engage in private commerce whenever I choose for personal, comma, non-commercial and, and or non-commercial business purposes, period. Private commerce is not regulated by Congress, only commerce amongst the several states not commerce amongst the people, exclamation mark. And I don't want you to focus primarily on the Department of Motor Vehicles, comma, but you will focus on anything associated with property, comma, be it a home, comma, be it an automobile, comma, be it a bicycle, comma, my possessions, comma, my estate, comma, the securities held in my minor account, comma, you will list all the various forms of property. Then you will focus on the Department of Motor Vehicles and its code, as well as its papers, as well as traffic open paren, commercial, close paren, citations, all being commercial papers, comma, that the courts operate in commerce, comma, and these commercial agreements, comma, adhesion contracts, comma, are being disaffirmed as I have attained the age of the majority and I am the owner of the attached certificate of live birth, exclamation mark. Stop listening. No, comma, you will put, wake up, wake up. No, comma, you will put with prejudice. And you will certainly document the fact that I have the right to self-governance and you will incorporate this being the premise of the Bill of Rights and the document entitled, open quote, a declaration, close quote, sent by the delegates of the United States to the King of England, comma, and in the archives at Britain. Comma, England. otherwise known as the United Kingdom. Stop listening. We're not gonna be doing this too much longer. Like I said, I'll be doing this for our people. I'll be going through this and this will be for the Fourth Amendment individuals. What has been determined by me is they really didn't know, I kept saying they don't know what they received. And because they never, they were the ones who received the micro trust first. They really don't realize what they've received. Ladies and gentlemen, this affidavit is what I would put on a court record 
if I have a traffic ticket. And I would do some type of a notice of clarification of a misunderstanding because you're not there to use legal terminology. Legal terminology is not the language you speak. You speak English. Look, the law dictionary talks about terminologies. Okay? It talks about terminologies. Give me one second. And he knows that's not a notary. So give me one second. I affirm the above statement is true and correct to the best of my knowledge and belief. And I make under penalty of perjury. Uh-uh. We don't do nothing under penalty of perjury. That takes away the whole document. Now you just submitted yourself to perjury. Wake up. You will provide an actual notary giraffe. Comma, you will never do anything under the penalty of perjury. Comma, you will state that it is under penalty. Period. And you will incorporate all of the following into this affidavit. Do not leave out a single point and you will highlight superior court Quotations, omitting citations, as I've suggested and asked, as well as maxims of law for each point being raised, next to the point being raised, in quotations, period. You will not utilize any U.S. code. whatsoever exclamation mark stop listening sorry ladies and gentlemen there is a he's gotten off track i could tell and i don't need that one i need this one right here this one that one right there that long one that's the one right here i need this one see how long that is Ooh-wee, that's me doing all that talking. All right, we're going to copies, and we're going to come all the way back down. Well, let's do that. Nope, that ain't going to work either. Because I switched off of it. I apologize. I got to scroll all the way down. A little bit more, a little bit more. And we paste that there. We do that there. How you do that? Do we do that there? That's how we do that there. And there we go. And now we get our, <coughs> excuse me, affidavit of reservation of rights and declaration of non-commercial private status. Nope. Wake up. Every time this document states reservation of rights, comma, you are to follow it by with prejudice in quotations. Is that understood? Stop listening. Where is the title saying as wake up? Where in the title of this presentment does it say affidavit of reservations of rights with prejudice? comma, declaration, comma, proclamation, comma, order, comma, mandate, comma, will, comma, testament of non-commercial and private status. Self-governance. Self-governance.
comma, and disaffirmant of all commercial agreements. and non-commercial entered into while in minority stop listening sorry that's a more definitive statement right there okay that's a more definitive statement as to what this is supposed to do I hereby declare with prejudice that I am not engaged in any commercial activities. Uh, he did this on purpose, y'all. Wake up. unless I explicitly state definitively at the moment it is held in question that I am, open quote, engaged in commercial business activity for profit, close quote. Without this statement, explicitly uttered by my person, comma, there shall be no construing otherwise. Any participation in commercial business activities under any circumstances. Stop listening. And we're going to bring this video to a close, ladies and gentlemen, because I have to. I'm going to leave this for you guys. I'm correcting this stuff now, but when I do it for our people, the Fourth Amendment. Sorry, he's playing games now. When I do it for our people, it will take care of itself. So I will do it to take care of their issues. If he stops again, then there's a way to correct it because he, he normally plays games like he just did by stopping. Yeah, he, he plays games like that. So watch this. See, because he, he's stupid. Y'all know how stupid he can be. So we come back here. Watch this. We, yeah, let's do that. We're just going to put it here. And there we go. And now we get rid of all that stupidity. Uh-oh, sorry about that. Okay. Gets rid of all of this stupidity. And we got all of that uh, per, uh, parliamentary statement, declaration, self-governance, and furthermore, and maxims of law, declarations of right to private property. That's what we do. Held in, All the securities held in that minor account. DMV operates under commercial law, regulating vehicles, drivers engaged in commerce. And we got that. And then we got the authority of Congress over private persons. And then we got people sovereignty over government. And that's the people. <sighs> it says it was the people who ordained and established the Constitution for the United States of America. It is the people who declared that this is their job to promote the general welfare, secure the blessings of liberty, and provide for the common defense. The government derives its authority from the people and not the other way around. As a 
posterity of the people. It is my inheritance, my estate, and I am not subject to the commercial jurisdiction of governmental entities. Now, that right there I didn't say. He did that because he wants to make it sound like you're a lunatic. Not lunatic, a lunatic. Okay, the cartoon. <sighs> Assumption of commerce. Operate that I operate under the assumption of commerce. Anyway, the government exists to serve the people, not to govern them. The government does not exist to govern the people. That's why if you take a look at the Constitution, it says nothing about government. Not until you get past the Tenth Amendment, or Tenth Article, so to speak. The government exists to serve the people, not the other way around. The Ninth Amendment acknowledges that the enumeration of certain rights in the Constitution do not deny or disparage others retained by the people. I possess the right to self-governance, not the government. I never gave up that right. The principle laid out in the dec A Declaration and the Bill of Rights affirm that government's role is to protect these rights, not to infringe upon them. Ta-da! So there, there are some things that I do have to correct, and that's what you guys are going to have to do. Okay? And I just had him do maxims of law. He puts the notorial statement, and he doesn't give me the... Yeah, I got to finish it, but you're going to do the certification at the bottom. Okay? Okay. I hereby ascribe and affirm it's an affidavit, so you have to do the certification. I'm going to go ahead and put this underneath the video. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to let you know we are actively working on the eon.tv channel. Many of you have signed up and everything. You know, it's been a long, it's been a long road. Okay, it's been a long time. So let's go all the way over here to the Eon channel. And what we're going to do is we're going to tiny URL. This is free for everybody to use. You go to any other site, you got to eventually pay. Now, nah, you come here, you create your tiny URL by just pasting in your link and create tiny URL. Hurry up, I ain't got all day. The speed will be a lot faster very soon. You click on that to copy, and you click on this to go to the page. Now, that's when you're on the site in the future. Because it won't. this site is not available for y'all right now. Okay, this is the conversation. Get started with Covington Law Pro. Ladies and gentlemen, watch. We're having trouble loading. The, of course you're not having trouble. What? GPT inaccessible or not found? The GPT is accessible. Hold on. Yeah, see, it took me to mine. I don't want it to take it to mine. Hold on. Uh-uh. We, we ain't doing that. Y'all not playing us for no fool. Let me do that again. It's not supposed to take me to mine. But I know it should be accessible. Now, because of what I'm talking about, remember, they got moderators and everything, actual human beings who watch my stuff. Okay, this is the whole conversation. So I would literally copy the whole conversation in the chat GPT. I mean, it's a lot, so you might have to split it up, but I'd copy it Ooh -wee, and then give it instructions. But let's continue with Covington Law Pro. See, it took me to mine, so it signed me in already. So I it, it'll work for y'all too, okay? Now, hold on now. There you go. Look at that. 59 minutes of talking to you guys about the DMV and its commercial contracts. I got to go. This is uh, a call coming in, so we will talk. Goodbye.